So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install some meta-analysis software and use the software to undertake very basic meta-analysis of dichotomous variables and continuous variables. The software we're going to use is called Jamovi. It's an open source uh, front end for uh, statistical analysis, which is quite easy to use, got a quite nice clean interface, and it uses the R metaphor package in the background to undertake the meta-analysis, which is a very powerful bit of software that can do all sorts of different analyses. Um, it's actually quite useful. So the first thing we'll do is to download the software. Um, so if we look for the software called Jamovi and go to jamovi.org, um, you'll see here, this is a brief description of the software. You can do all sorts of different statistics using this software. We're going to concentrate on the meta-analysis, but you might find it useful for other things as well. Click the download button, find the version for your operating system, whether you're on Windows or Mac. I'd usually recommend using the solid version, which is the most stable release. Um, but if you want newer features, you could try the current version out. If you click the link, the file will download. And then once it's finished, you can run the installer and install the software. Once you've got your movie installed, um, launch it and you'll see a screen that looks something like this. So on the left hand side, you've got your essentially spreadsheet for entering data and defining variables. And on the right hand side is where you will see the outputs from your analysis when you get going. You can see there's already some pre-installed packages at the top here for various types of analysis. Um, the first time you use the software, you'll have to install the package that you need for performing meta-analysis. And that package is called Major. You can see I've already got it installed here. But when you first open the software, that won't be there. So if you click on the little plus modules button to the right hand side um, and then click on the Jamovi library. And when you scroll down, this is a list of all the different packages that are available for use within the software. You'll find one called Major Meta Analysis for Jamovi. Um, and if you haven't got it installed already, there'll be an install button at the bottom here. And if you click the install button, that package will then be installed and available for use. Once you're done, you should see the Major button at the top of your screen for analysis. So the first thing we're going to look at is a dichotomous analysis. So here we're talking about something where you have a number of events and a total number of patients at risk for each group of your study. So something, for example, like acute rejection or um, you know, new onset diabetes or death or uh, graft loss, for example. Um, as I've shown in the slides for, in the presentation earlier, um, you essentially need here five bits of data. So you're going to have five columns in your spreadsheet. The first column is going to be your study description or your study name. So if you click on the top of the column, you can see that you can define your variables. You'd call it study name. And here, we're just going to say that this is um, a nominal text value. OK. Um, the next column is going to be the number of patients in your study group um, who had the outcome that you're interested in. So for example, developed acute rejection. Now it's important here that you change this to a continuous variable, otherwise the meta-analysis won't work because this is numeric, but you can leave it as an integer because we're talking at whole numbers of patients. The next column, is going to be the total number of patients in our study group. OK, so all of the patients at risk in that study. And again, that's going to be a continuous variable. The final column, now we're having to define a new data variable, is going to be the number of patients in our control group who develop rejection, for example, or develop the outcome we're interested in. OK. And then the final column is going to be the number of the total number of patients, so we use a capital M there, in our control group. Okay, and again that needs to be continuous.
Okay, so once we've defined all of that, we now have our data here. So we're going to have the study name, the number of patients experiencing the outcome, and the total number of patients in either group of the study. It doesn't matter what you call these columns, you can give them a better description if you want to. So you could say acute rejection study, total study, acute rejection control. This is the nomenclature that I use, but you can use anything you like as long as you know which column's got which data in. Okay, once you've done that, you can enter your data in the rows below. I'm just going to load some data that I put in earlier on. Pull this across. Okay, so what you can see now is I have got some data that I um, let me just make that bigger that I loaded earlier on. OK, so I've got 15 studies here and I've got the number of patients in either group that experienced the outcome. This outcome is uh, from the example earlier in the presentation, uh, the example of new onset diabetes after transplantation with the study group being steroid avoidance and the control group being standard steroid maintenance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the major button at the top to launch the meta-analysis package. And you can see I've got the option of a bunch of different types of analysis. Uh, the one I'm interested in here are the dichotomous models because we're talking about binary data. So when I click that, I see the following screen. OK, so on the left hand side where I'm going to define my data and select the options for my analysis. And on the right hand side, I'm going to see the output of my analysis. So you can see here I have to match the columns in my data grid to what the model is looking for. So my study label is the study name, the number of incidents in the study group, the total sample size in the study group, the number of incidents in the control group, and the total sample size in the control group. Once I've defined all that data, you'll see it then undertakes the meta-analysis automatically for me, draws a forest plot and starts showing me some data. So let's take a look, closer look at the output data here. Um, so what you can see here is we're using a fixed effects model and here is the estimate of effect size, p-value, 95% confidence interval. Now, it's worth noting that these are log values. Um, so we're using log odds ratio. We can change it to a log risk ratio if we like. OK. Um, and also plotted on the graph here are the log um, effect sizes. We can check the option here to back transform the log odds ratio to a, a, a non-transformed odds ratio. and. Um, if we do that, that will show us the odds ratio itself when it's been transformed back in the 95% confidence interval, which is perhaps a little bit easier to interpret. Um, there's a few options down here to change the appearance of the forest plot, should you want to, so the, the graphics used and so on. And then down the bottom here, we've got our publication bias assessment. So you can see the, the file drawer analysis is significant, suggesting perhaps some publication bias. But the test for funnel plot asymmetry is, is not. If we look at the funnel plot itself, you can imagine there's perhaps a few studies missing, a few smaller studies missing from the right hand side here. So what about analysis of continuous variables here? Here we're going to have means and standard deviations for the groups in each of our studies. Um, and we want to provide a summary effect for something like, for example, creatinine clearance or serum creatinine. Um, so this time there are three bits of data for each arm of each study that we need. So again, we've got the study name. We need the mean and the standard deviation, as well as the total number of patients in both groups for every study. And that will allow us to undertake a continuous meta-analysis. So there's some data I've entered here. So this data is for steroid avoidance and withdrawal again. And this is looking at the serum creatinine levels with and without steroid withdrawal following kidney transplantation. Okay. So again, if I select the major button at the top of the screen, you can now see that what I want to use is, is mean differences. And it's telling me I need the total number of patients, the mean and the standard deviation. OK, so now, just as we did for our dichotomous analysis, we need to match the columns in our data sheet 
to the data that the model expects. So the sample size for group one for the study group is this one. The mean is this one, the standard deviation there. The sample size for group two, the mean and the standard deviation, and then the study name here. Well, as soon as we've matched all those variables up, it'll run the analysis. And here we have, okay. So what we've got here to start off with is a random effects model using the standardized mean difference. In other words, we've taken the mean and divided it by the standard deviation for each study so that we can use measurements on different scales. Now, for a lot of what we're doing, we don't actually need to undertake that transformation because all of the measurements we've taken are on the same scale. So, for example, serum creatinine, as long as it's always measured in millimoles per litre, you don't need to undertake that standardization. And you can leave the raw means um, for the analysis. And the advantage of doing that is, of course, the output, the mean difference that you get, is a raw mean difference in the natural units of whatever it is you're analysing. So it's easier to interpret. So if we want to do that, we go to model options and we just change this back to raw mean differences. Okay, and again here, we're starting off with a random effects analysis, and you can see now what we've got is an estimate for our difference overall of 4.05. So that's four millimoles per litre difference between the study and the control groups in terms of serum creatinine, and that's significant. The confidence intervals don't cross zero. Okay, again here, we've got our heterogeneity statistics. So we've got the I squared value here and the Cochrane P value. Okay, um, we can change to a fixed effects analysis if we should want to. Doesn't have a significant effect on the results, so they're still significant and the effect size is about the same. If we scroll down here, we can see our forest pot. It's got all of those data points in it, the mean differences for each individual study, and then the overall analysis at the bottom. If we want to make that a bit more readable, we have the option of increasing the size of the forest plot. We can change our axis and we can change the, the graphics used as well. Okay. Again, down the bottom, we've got our various aspects of publication bias analysis with the p values. So, failsafe n again is significant here, whereas Eggers and, and the BEG test are not. And again, here's our forest plot, uh, funnel plot, sorry, and you can see that there's potentially some missing data. Uh, the bottom left hand side here. Okay, so that's very basic meta analysis using this software. There's lots of other options uh, in here that you can play with, um, and it's pretty easy to do. And there's a few other options for meta analyzing different types of data. So you can meta analyze proportions, you can put in raw effect sizes if you already know the effect sizes and you don't need the software to calculate those.